Hi guys, Craig and Annette, Oz Camping. Today, as promised, we're going to have a look at how to troubleshoot your Truma hot water system. So this is the Truma Ultra Rapid 14 litre model. And the very first thing you need to do when you start troubleshooting is make sure that you have water. Okay, so and that this system is full of water. The easiest way to do that is this pressure relief valve on the side here. Just pull the lever and down this hose here you should see a solid flow of water and as you can see that's not a solid flow of water so I don't have water pressure at the moment so let's troubleshoot that if I turn my water pump on that might resolve the issue now when I open this I get a solid flow of water see the bubble coming back now and if I open it I've got a solid flow of water. So two things I've just done with troubleshooting. One is I've determined that I do have water flow. And the second, I've made sure that the Truma storage unit is full of water because that's very important. The heater will shut off if this isn't full of water. So the next part of troubleshooting is having a look at how you're going to heat the water. Are you going to use your 240 volt system or are you going to use your gas system? So I'm going to break it into sections. We're going to have a look at troubleshooting the 240 volt. And then I'm going to have a look at some typical installation issues, which will cause you problems when you're running on gas. And then we'll have a look at troubleshooting the gas system. So starting with troubleshooting the 240 volt. Let's assume that we're plugged into 240 volt somewhere. You're going to need to be, or you will have to run this on an inverter. Uh, the way our van's hooked up, this is our mains power connector, not our inverter. So our van would need to be plugged into a 240 volt power supply, either at home or on a powered caravan site. So make sure that we've got our water heater plugged into the power point. Make sure that the power point is on. And within 30 to 40 minutes, we should have hot water. If we haven't, one of two things have happened. We either don't have 240 volt power supply, which is simple and easy enough to check by plugging something else in, or we don't have the heater full of water and the thermostat would have shut down. So let's do our troubleshooting. We'll turn the power point off, unplug our hot water heater, plug in another device that we know works. This is my battery charger for my power drills turn on the power point and that reveals that we have no 240 volt power so now you would go back and you would troubleshoot your 240 volt power issue because it's as simple as that when you run the system on 240 volt you don't need your gas turned on you don't need your 12 volt turned on you only have to plug it into a working outlet okay so if you know that that's working then you should have hot water on 240 volt so that's it for troubleshooting 240 volt. Remember, the very first thing is water, and then we look at how you're heating. Okay, so troubleshooting installation issues. Most of the troubleshooting for installation issues can be done here, outside where your heater is mounted. So the first thing is, have they installed the cowling? Because if they haven't installed the cowling, the airflow is going to be all wrong and you're going to have problems with flame outs. Okay, so this cowling has been carefully designed to cover the manifold fascia. This is an inlet, this round hole at the bottom is an inlet, and on top there's another round hole behind this plastic which is an exhaust. And this is carefully designed to allow air to come in here but not blow into the exhaust. Okay, so it creates an airflow. Hot air coming out here causes air to be sucked in here, and that's how you get good air circulation through to keep the pilot flame going. If you've got a lot of flame outs, make sure that this has been attached. So coming a little bit closer, Annette, I'm going to point out a couple of things here. So behind the cowling, the plastic cowling is just held on with four screws. You can take those out, no problem at all. And behind that, you've got an aluminium plate, okay? Now behind that aluminium plate, there is a, an, 
a rectangular manifold with a divider through the middle. Now that manifold, I'm gonna put some photos up so you can have a look at that. So take a minute to have a look at those photos. So you've had a look at those photos, so you know that behind here we've got the manifold from the water heater protruding through the wall. Now Truma designed that for 35 mil thick walls. Now that is fine for most caravans, but if you've got checker plate on the side of your van, chances are that the Truma hot water system has not come right through because this checker plate adds enough to exceed the 35 mil. Now if the installer hasn't put the extension on the manifold, you'll have a problem where there's a gap between this plate and the manifold. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of more pictures so that you can have a look at what I'm talking about there and you'll see the gap that we had on our installation. Okay, so you've seen those photos and you can see that the manifold wasn't coming all the way through the wall and so this metal plate was not hard up against the manifold. Now again, that causes circulation problems because the exhaust can then vent through into the inlet and it causes flame outs. So if you've got trouble lighting your gas, this is gonna cause that, okay? so. What we need to do is we need to have a look and make sure that this is installed properly. If you come right in close, there's a quick way to check. Under here where my finger is, there's a little tag that comes through a hole here. Now you can see on ours it looks quite black because the tag in fact did not come all the way through. But there's a tag on the manifold and when this plate, this flashing plate is screwed to the manifold, that little tag should be flush with the front. If it's not, then you've got the problem that you saw in the photos that I showed you. So, what you need to do is you either need to unmount inside and slide the whole water system further through the wall so that you can mount this plate properly before pushing it back against the wall, or you need to get the manifold extension, or you need to take it back to where you bought it from and get them to fix it under warranty. Or you could do what we did, because I guess I was impatient, but using a high temperature sealant, okay, don't, please don't use silicon, this is a water heater, it does get quite hot. Use a high temperature sealant, the one I used was in excess of 280 degrees C, and I made up a gasket to go all the way around the manifold so that when I put the plate back on the front, it was sealed, okay? So if you've got everything sealed here and you've got the um, cowling on, the plastic cowling on, you really should have no problems lighting this. So those are the installation issues you need to check for and then we'll have a look at how you can troubleshoot running this on gas. Okay, so we've got all our installation issues checked off. We know that everything's working, uh, everything's installed properly and we're happy with it. So we should have no problems running this water heater on gas now. First, make sure that the cover is open. If you've got the clip-on plastic cover that goes over the cowling, pop that off. You should be looking at your cowling just like this. Make sure that your gas bottle is turned on. And then on most installations, very near the water heater, in our case, just underneath the van here, you can see the gas line and it has a yellow tap in line, okay? It's, I'll show you a photo of that. Okay, so as you can see from the photo, the tap is in line with the copper pipe, 
that means that it's on. Okay, so we've checked that we've got gas bottle turned on, we've checked that we've got our gas stop valve turned on to the hot water system, and we've checked that we've got our manifold open. Just before we head inside, a great way to tell whether you've got gas flow is try another gas appliance. So the stove's lit, I know I've got gas flow. Now we can head inside and have a look there. So you remembered from the previous video we did on, on the basic operation of the hot water system on gas. If I turn the controller switch down to 70 degrees, the heater should click, which it hasn't. So there is an issue there. Remember the heater needs 12 volt as well as gas. If you're running on 240 volt, you only need the 240 volt. But if you're running on gas, you need to check your control panel and make sure that your hot water switch is turned on. So now I should have 12 volt. Let's flick the switch again. And the heater goes click and I should get ignition. Now, if I don't get that click and I've got my switch on down here, then I need to check to see whether I've got actual 12 volt supply. So let's have a quick look at that. Come over this way. Okay, so this corner here, there's two Phillips head screws. We can take those screws out and lift this corner up and underneath there, there is a uh, circuit board with a 1.6 amp fuse on it. You can check to make sure that that fuse isn't blown. And if you've got a multimeter, you can probe the two points where the, where the um, power supply is coming in and make sure that you've got your 12 volts there. I believe the cutout voltage is 10.5, so if your batteries are low, the hot water system is not gonna run either, okay? But when we turn it on, if we've got our 12 volt on, we hear that click and that's the system turning on. It should ignite at that point, so to check for ignition, we can go back around the back and put our hands over top of the uh, outlet that's on the side of the van, and you should feel a little bit of heat. And within 15, 20 minutes, you're going to have hot water. Okay, so troubleshooting for running on gas. Let's make sure we've got no installation issues because that's gonna cause flame outs and all sorts of trouble. If we don't have any installation issues and we're happy with that, we make sure our gas is on, we make sure that our 12 volt is on, and then when we flick this switch, we make sure we hear an audible click, and nine times out of 10, this is going to fire up and you'll be right. If it does flame out, you're going to get a red LED around the ring of this controller switch to indicate that the heater has gone out or the flame has gone out. Okay, at that point, to overcome that, you turn the switch off again. The manual says wait 10 minutes. Usually I wait two or three, and then I turn the switch back on again. And that should create ignition. Okay, so that's how you troubleshoot on gas. It's a little bit more involved, but once you get used to it, it's quite easy. So thanks for watching. I hope that's been helpful to you. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. We love to have you following us and look forward to producing some more videos for you. See you next time.